to Jay Jake Jackets. Gear up to fire the cannon and hit the ice with your host, Jay Ashdown and Jake Gehringer. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. Honestly, this is mm-hmm. a uh, this is a, this is um, I'm really excited for this episode. I'm ashamed that we couldn't really book a guest in time for this. Yeah, but well, I uh, mean, we got a lot of playoff talk to, to go through. So I think maybe we should just wait on a guest until after the playoffs. Maybe, yeah. But uh, hey. Welcome to episode 50, everybody. The Corey Crawford episode. <laughs> the Eric Robinson episode. Yeah, I probably should have picked the blue jacket, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I was, uh, I told my mom about this and she was like, are there any players with number 50? And she was like, give them shout outs. And I was like, I mean, Columbus has one. And then there's some like, I'm actually looking at this right now. There were 11 players this year that wore number 50, and it looks like at least six of them were goals. Sean Jersey is another one. Ken Appleby. Mm-hmm. Jordan Bennington. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nico Dawes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot that Dawes wore 50. Yeah. Uh, Jersey. Benoit Olivier Gruel for uh, the Ducks. The Ducks, yeah. Max Gennett for the Sens. Eric Shelgren, goalie for the Leafs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shelgren, uh, Trent Miner for Colorado. Uh, Prosvitov in Arizona. Uh, Ricola in Pittsburgh and Robbie. Wow. All of those players were 50 this year. A it's lot weird. of elite names, huh? <laughs> we're going we're gonna, to, you know, celebrate and thank you all at the end of the show for supporting this little crazy adventure but uh yeah let's get into actually um i want to start with Kepi keepers and obviously this is the end of the season we're going to go through the chart and just go through you know who got what sure uh poor bammer didn't get anything because mm-hmm. i mean we talked about this mid-season overshadowed by a lot of guys yeah i did lug I did really like doing this segment though, and just shouting players out and giving them. Yeah, a I liked it a lot. Was, I think I think we'll definitely bring it back when next season rolls around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Bjorkstrand got six of them, uh, two from you and four from me. <laughs> wow. I mean, he's my dear. Did you expect yeah. anything less from me? <laughs> I'm surprised that it wasn't like a larger disparity. I thought it was going to be like two from me and like eight from you. <laughs> That's what it felt like during the season. That's definitely what it felt like, didn't it? But it was funny, too, because I remember back when we had Mike on the show, I gave you an open window to give him, you know, to give him one, and you were like, nope. And I was like, no, don't me. <laughs> uh, Chinny had four, two from each of us. Wow. Uh, Justin Danforth got one from me. Okay. Max got four. Mm-hmm. He got one from you. He got two from me, and then uh, our guest Kepi with Mike. That was his. Yeah. So Mike Todd giving Max a shout out. Greg Hoffman got a couple when he was here. <laughs> God, that seems so forever ago. Doesn't I it? know, doesn't it? And he got one from each of us just because you know. Um, I think mine was from when he was. I from when he was on the second line and just how well he played that game in particular. Yeah. I can't remember what yours was. <laughs> a lot of the um a lot of the bottom six guys are really just from the hard work that they provide, really. You yeah. know? Yeah. Uh Boone got five. I'm surprised he didn't get more. Um, I would say that that comes with the fact that he didn't play for well over a month that too uh he got three from you and two from me 
Sean Corelli got three of them. He got two from you, one from me. Yeah, I'm not surprised there. <laughs> uh, you won't be surprised with this either. Patty Line leading the Cappy chart mm-hmm. with eight. Wow, I was gonna guess nine, perhaps. How many? Did, how many did you give? Uh, he got four each. Wow. So it was a nice 50-50 split for yeah. point per game, Patty. <laughs> yeah, he was really good this year. Gosh, that injury that ended his season just I swear he could have gotten so much more, but it was good to see him return to form this year. Yeah. And it's nice that he loves the city. Wants to stay. They're going to work on staying. Yeah, I'm excited about that. I'm very excited. I'm not looking forward to what this number is going to be, but like we've said, blank check, and we'll deal with it later. (laughs) I mean, we know it's going to be a large number, but... Oh, yeah. That's a part of the business. I mean, we've had so many players to leave. What are you going to do? Would you you rather another one leave? Well, it's nice to have one that actually is, you know, verbal in wanting to stay. Exactly. And same with this guy, Gus Nyquist. He's also been very vocal in wanting to stay. How many did he get? He only got two. Wow. He got one from each of us. Interesting. Uh, And I'm pretty sure both of those were because of his shorthanded efforts. Yeah, here's the thing. I mean, you know, a lot of these cappies were given out because guys would have like breakout performances, would do really well in like a two to three game stretch. Or a special like Moment. circumstance or yeah. narrative. Like first NHL goal or something like that. Um, with, with Gus, he was just very consistent throughout the year. Yeah. He, he played well, but there wasn't too many breakout performances per se right you know to to choose from it it was just consistent most night he was contributing and again you know there were there are so many times where you you think of like three guys to choose from right yeah but then they get overshadowed like we talked about with bammer he got overshadowed a lot of nights by a patty performance or something that Voracek did or whoever. Boone Voracek. had a lot of those. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the same goes with Gus. Like you you really you notice him every single night. And one of those reasons is because he played every single night. <laughs> Only one or yeah. two. Yeah, that's that's another thing. He he was just happy for that alone. I mean, it was him and Pete who played all 82 games. Right. So. Exactly. Um Robbie number 50 ended up getting one from you after a really solid effort you only got one you only got one and it was yours wow look at me representing (laughs) uh rosie got three he got two from you and one from me Mm -hmm. good for jack because early on in the year he just wasn't really clicking and then he finally started getting into things yeah, it was towards the end of the year. He was playing really well, so that was good. That was very good for us. We we needed that from him. <laughs> it's, it's a nice little confidence boost to the end of the season going into next year. I think. Good for the, good for the Powell kid. And like you said, you know when he scored, he scores in bunches. He scores two goals if at a time. If he a goal, you you, you should go to go online and put like a five dollar bet on him scoring again. Yeah, exactly. It, it happened so many times this year. Put it, put in, put in a money line for him to score at least twice. Yeah. Like if he's already scored, then you put your bet in, <laughs> right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um. So yeah, Rosie with three. Uh, one of our rookies, Goal Cylinder, ended up with four. Hmm. Uh, he ended up, let me read this. He got two from each of us. Yeah. Feel bad for Alex Texier. He only had the one from you early on in the year. That because was... He just dealt with so much. Yeah. I'm excited about him next year, though. He'll be back, and I think he's going to have a good year next year. Viva la France. He's going to the Worlds. Good for him. Yeah. They're going to rely heavily on him. 
uh, him and Antoine Roussel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're going to rely heavily on him. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then maybe if Cristobal Huey is like their goalie coach or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jake only got two of them, and they were both from uh, this Jake. <laughs> that scored more than six goals. Uh, yeah, kind of, yeah, right? But I mean, I think it was just the way that he dished, right? You, you gave him a lot of praise. You didn't give him a cappy. I gave him a lot of praise, but I did give him a kepi for the same reason that you said earlier is, you know, we can only give out one, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So a lot, of, here's the thing. A lot of times, like he's dishing really well, but if he's dishing really well, chances are Patty's getting the, the, the kepi, kepi from, from you because yeah. he's burying it. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's, that's just kind of how it worked out. Uh, Jake Bean didn't get anything, which is a shame because we, you know, I'm, I'm still high on this kid. Yeah, I, I still very high on the potential. Um, I don't dislike the player. No. He was out for some time. Right. We just got to see more, of it, especially on the defensive end. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, I like we've talked about so many times, this team played very, you know, they want to play up ice. They, they want to play offense. They, they play up tempo. And right. as a result, there was – way more attention to offense than defense and that's going to come next year there's going to be more of a balance he had plenty of big goals and big moments like i remember some of his goals that were just him screaming and off a rush but he had <laughs> uh, the overtime winner at seattle he did yeah so um he, he had a two goal game against anaheim he's, he's either, i think he's gonna be fine it's just mm-hmm. this year was not what I think a lot of people hoped it would be from him. Right. But he's still 23. Yeah, he's really, really young. He's going to be fine. He's going to be just fine. Uh, Boakfist got one from you. That's surprising. That is very surprising that he only got one this season. Yeah, honestly. Um, yeah. Wow. I don't know. I, I think for me, it was just watching highlights and then noticing the forwards more. Yeah, that's the, and that's the thing that we talked about with how we played this year. The, the forwards would be more noticeable than the defensemen. Mm-hmm. But Boakvist obviously had a huge, huge year. Um, when he was in the lineup, there were a lot of stretches where he wasn't. This poor guy just couldn't stay healthy. Mm-hmm. And I really hope that he's able to next year for, I mean, obvious reasons. Yeah. Like, I still think him and Z can work out a lot. Frankly, I kind of don't want to see them together. No? No. You, you want to see I him drive his both, own pair? I think they're both so good offensively, you split them up. That's totally fair. Yeah. I would put, put Vlad with, uh, with Boakfist mm-hmm. and then try out Vorensky with Bean again. Do that again? Okay, that's fair. And or, then, or maybe, maybe you find someone else to to go with Warensky and you put Bean with Blanks. Bean and Blanks would be pretty fun. Yeah, that would be really, really fun. Uh, Gavi only got one, and it was from you. It was from mm-hmm. uh, his sweet goal. <laughs> yeah, I still remember you. Uh, I still remember when you gave it to him. You were like, "Yeah, I'm gonna answer the call." <laughs> <laughs> that's like my favorite celly ever it is it's the best selling in, in hockey it's it's for me at least in terms of columbus like signature sellies it's between that one because we know he does that all the time and and, and the rick nash uh, fist pump like where you go down one knee for this team in particular i would say for uh for cole screaming like a banshee with the mouth right. guard hanging out yeah <laughs> all the time He's just so jacked all the time, and I love it. This kid's so much fun to watch. He is. <laughs> so good. Uh, Scott Harrington obviously didn't play much, didn't get anything. Seventh, eighth D. He's it's Scott Harrington played for the Columbus Blue Jackets this season. Breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he did draw in a few times, right? He wasn't really seventh or eighth defenseman. He was more like ninth or tenth. Kind of, yeah. 
It's something against Scott. It's more that we're in a position where we kind of know what he is, and there's guys that we want to know what they are. We know what Scott is. We don't really need his services much anymore. He's he's very much. I don't know if his deal's up. His deal's up at the end of the year. He's probably going to sign. Uh, I'd imagine like a one year contract somewhere show, show me deal kind L- of thing. league men kind of thing play you know that seventh or eighth role that you just mentioned yeah he's yeah for us this year he was pretty much a martin marinch and he was a buoy yeah there's nothing against him it's just you know we, we know what he is and there's other guys that we don't know what they are and we need to we need to See know what they, they got are. right and those guys are you know younger and more potential to be a part of our future. Scott's not really a part of our future. And I, I wish him the best of luck wherever oh, he yeah. goes off season because I doubt that he's going to be back with us. He was, gosh, I'm trying to even remember how we acquired him. He was in Kirby Reichel. The Reichel deal. That's right. I would say we won that deal. It's a shame though because Kirby Reichel was a first round pick. So we were hoping more out of that kid, but. Feel bad for that 2013 first round. Like I know Alex is doing fine now, and he's on our dead cap for next year. Still the buyout. Yeah, so we at least so, the buyout's not bad because we bought him out before he turned 26. But um, it's it still sucks that it didn't work out in the first round in our favor. But and but, poor Marco. God, I miss Marco Dano. You know who we did get in that draft. In the third round, we got this uh, nice little Dane named Oliver. <laughs> so, yeah, that was big. That was, that we, was we yeah. That from that draft class. Yarmo is definitely, you know, ve- like very much a wizard in later rounds of the draft. Yeah, he's been hit or miss in the first round. He's hit big a couple times, you know, obviously, you know, he made the big uh, pick with Pierre-Luc Dubois third overall mm-hmm. that surprised everybody. And that, and that did work out. And for then a while. He, yeah. It worked out for a while. And then he flipped him for, you know, another the second pick, the second pick. It was also really <laughs> good. So it, it, that was a slam dunk success picking Dubois third overall, you know, he got Moransky seventh overall. Mm-hmm. Um, That was, a, no, he was eighth, wasn't he? Yes, that's why he wears number eight. Rob was seventh overall. Yeah, so so we get, yeah we got Warinsky eighth overall, and uh, th- those were two like really really good picks that we're all excited mm-hmm. about and whatnot. But then there's other guys where it's like, you know, Wenberg, <clears throat> Anno, Reichel. Um, St- I still miss Marco. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, he was a one year wonder, but I mean we did we did end up making off well with that though because he was a part of the Brandon Saad deal which then turned into the Panarin deal which then but turned then, eventually into yeah yeah but then you know you for everyone like that you've also got your you your know, Bjorkstrands Carlson. your Elvises your Cam Atkinsons well I mean, he didn't he didn't draft Cam well what I'm saying is like in later rounds right for like the yeah, but I, you know, for for all the good players that he's picked in the first round, you've also got your Gabe Carlson's and maybe your Liam Foodies. We don't know yet. It might be too early to tell with that. Still, really wanted to see more from Foods this year, and then hearing yeah. his injury, I was like, man. I mean, I I hope that he's up early next year. I, I yeah. Hear- Thing, Jake, I don't think that there's really any need to have him in the minors anymore. I'm fine no. with the guy developing in the minors, but boys, he's about to be 21, 22. I think it's he, time. He can't sit there forever. He can't sit there forever, 100%. I think we need to to bring him up, and we need to see what we got in the guy. And yeah, Jake, we'll I mean, if the answer is the, the most that we got out of this guy is a speedy bottom six forward, I'm fine with that because we don't need him to be a top six center. No. When you've got guys like Boone Jenner and Kent Johnson and Cole Sillinger, like, like you're fine. Yeah. The center yeah, depth is all right. Like, like if this guy's a bottom six center along with uh, Sean Corrali, so what? Bottom six wing, even. Yeah. Just, just, just show me something. Just show me that he can at least draw into the lineup most nights. Play, yeah, play in the lineup. 
Uh, back to the chart. Kooks got one from me. Pretty sure that was from just him scoring. I uh, God, I wonder what they're going to do with him in the offseason now that his deal's up. Yeah. I wouldn't mind keeping him if he walks. That's okay. Slow freed up cap. I don't have anything against the player, but I think no. at this point I'd rather just let him walk. Yeah, I think the. And it's nothing against him as a player. I think it's more so just that's a spot freed up for someone else. It's a spot freed up for a guy like Blankenberg. Exactly. Uh, Peak didn't get anything. I mean, he played in every game, which... Yeah, that's tough. That he played in all 82 one. games, <laughs> and he didn't get a single cappy. This poor guy. Because, <laughs> I mean, he looked fine at times, right? But then he really had his moments where he just ugh. when when he made mistakes, he made mistakes, and I felt so bad for this kid. Mm-hmm. The tough thing for him, yeah, he's not even a kid; he's older than us, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, he's not. I, I don't want to hear. I've been really hard on the kid, very hard on the kid. It's not that I dislike the player, right? It's that. I feel that it's more risk than a reward mm-hmm. with him on the ice. He's getting better defensively, mm-hmm. but he's still not, in my opinion, good enough defensively to give consistent minutes to, considering what a black hole he is offensively. <laughs> right. I mean, if he if he if he becomes better defensively and you know starts to shoot up and, and gets better with that, you know, in, in his defensive ratings, mm-hmm. then maybe you've got yourself another David Savara. But right now, he's not close to that. Nope. We'll see. Uh, Zach only got two of them. I'm surprised. He- yeah, well, another situation where he had some injuries throughout the course of the season. And I think the other thing for us though is. As far as Kepis are concerned, it's a lot easier to give it to players who have, you know, oh, three point nine for this player, right? You know, oh, the, you know, two goals and assists, two goals, patty, assists, patty, whatever, you know, hat trick, whatever. <laughs> you don't get that as often with defensemen, right? And I think that we give way more Kepis to forwards and goaltenders than we do defensemen, right? Um, he did get one from each of us, which is nice. Uh, you gave one to Corpy early on in the year for a decent game. I am say, did you give him one? It was you. Holy shit! He got one, and it was from me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I, dude, I don't know what you do with him. I know what you do with him. If if he, <laughs> you know, is is he done after this year or is it next? No, it's it's this is it's this season. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, I wish him the best of luck. Yeah, I wish him the best of luck, and I hope he does well elsewhere. I'm lying. I hope he doesn't do well elsewhere, and it sounds like such a shitty thing to say. But if he goes to like Tampa or some shit like that and plays well, I'm gonna be like, man, what the hell? I mean, if it's like Tampa and Vegas, then no. But if it's like you know, yeah, if he I helps a, if he helps in Ottawa, if he helps like. Goes to like San Jose or some shit like that. Like I guess, I guess, man. I don't know. <laughs> it's just dude, like, if dude, he goes somewhere else dude, and posts like a nine twenty through like forty games. I'm gonna be pissed. Jay, Veggie, and Corpy. Imagine in Arizona. <laughs> it tears just came out of my eye. <laughs> Uh, Elvis got six of them, and obviously the majority are from the resident goalie in this podcast. How many did I give? Four? You gave him four. Okay. Uh, I gave him two, and one of them was really early on in the year because of the Matisse incident. I think we both gave it to him for that game, if I'm not mistaken. I think so. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. And then Tarasov got one from me. Yeah. Just because he performed as well as he did before he got hurt. It's an interesting question for this team in the offseason as far as backup goalie, because if they don't bring Corpus Salo back, I'm wondering 
if they are confident enough to keeping just let, back just let Tarasov do it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do as far as that's concerned, but like, who knows, man, you know, I, the, how exciting would it be to have Elvis and Tarasov as your two goalies? And it would be very Rube, fun, but I feel Rube like they, in the minors to work with Jack Greaves. And then, you know, the, the backup goalie market right now is shitty really yeah it's <laughs> it sucks yeah. <laughs> it'll just be as real as possible it sucks <laughs> if it, i mean well i don't want to say it like totally suck it's fine it's the starting goalie market that sucks <laughs> teams that need need a starting goalie are looking at this list like what the hell <laughs> there's guys like well you look at the <laughs> i'm trying to even think because there's the first one that came to mind is martin jones <laughs> So wait, are, are we talking about for backups? For backups, yes. For backups, I mean, you've got your Yaroslav Halaks, you've mm-hmm. got your Braden Holpies, Martin Jones is on the market as well. Um, yeah, this, this is other guys too. I'm trying to think of. You, you can get one fresh Dustin Tukarski. <laughs> you can get a fresh Carter Hutton. <laughs> <laughs> Did I just throw up in your mouth a little bit? <laughs> um, God, who else? I think Kevin Lincoln is a free agent, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, um, because Chicago has like nobody. It's Lankinen and Delia. Yeah, <laughs> and then the kid that they want to eventually bring up, because since they traded Flurry, it was like they had to ride Kevin. Yeah, there's also oh, Miko Koskinen. Koskinen, Flurry, because Fl- Flurry says he wants to come back for a year. Yes, and the question is, is if Flurry comes back, w- w- you know who's also interesting is Casey the Smith. Casey's out for the remainder of the playoffs. I know, but what we'll, I think we'll get into that in a yeah. second. I think that there's a very good chance he's not going to be back in Pittsburgh next year. Could be Jari, and then maybe a Flurry reunion. I think I think Flurry's coming home. Yeah, so I mean, you know, Casey DeSmith's been a pretty solid goalie. I, he had a rough first half of the season. He was yeah. terrible. It was awful. But the second half of the season, he was pretty pretty good. He was, you know, very uh, similar to what he has been for most of his career because he had a really good year last year. Mm-hmm. The year before that, he was pretty solid. So I think Casey DeSmith is a very capable goaltender. Um, Looked okay when he started in the playoffs for, you know, a minute he looked very good in that rangers game in game one mm-hmm. well he stopped like 48 of like 51 i think uh just to wrap up the happy thing because we actually have a list a mm-hmm. small list of guys outside the chart yeah uh kj got two from world juniors one from yes. each of us yeah uh fix got one from each of us for his first nhl goal Mm-hmm. Uh, you gave Baruby one for his yeah, first win. It. Yeah, he, he absolutely deserved was. it for how well he played in that three game stretch. Yeah, he did. Uh, I gave Jake Christensen one for his first goal. Uh, he did, dude, Christensen is an interesting guy. I want to see him next year. He looked good. That is a guy that could challenge for one that of those is, D spots. You know, yeah. Jay Christensen and Nick Blankenberg are two guys who are very much the reason why I'm perfectly fine with us not keeping Dean Kugan. There's nothing against the player. I like well, Dean. No. I never had a problem with him, but like yeah, two spots here with these two undrafted kids mm-hmm. look pretty damn good. Right, exactly. Uh you gave one to number 61 for obvious reasons. Yeah. Legend. Uh Rick Nash and then Mike Todd gave a guest cappy to max domi shout out to mike uh we'll get you back on the show at some other point man we mm-hmm. loved that's still my favorite episode to this day yeah, it, was, it was a great one <laughs> i keep watching it i keep re-watching it just for that interview because we had so much fun with that you know yeah uh i give one to carson meyer for her for her for his first goal um yeah. and obviously just the way this buckeyes played in columbus you know another the the fourth of four local products yeah 
<laughs> between curls and rosie and cole and carson yeah uh and then i gave one to blank for just his performance near the end of the year right. the, you know you bring up kj and you sign blank for the rest of the year out of nowhere just as a like what a smart move yeah it was a really smart move that was such a wow I thought, you know, because I knew that obviously we knew KJ was going to eventually sign and come up, but then to get Blankenberg out of nowhere for the rest of the year? It was good. I, I, I loved it. Um, oh, yeah. It was an experiment that needs to continue. Absolutely. 100%. Uh, and then our end of season cappies, uh, you gave one to Z and I gave one to Elvis. So Z, Z, that's And that's what we talked about. Like Z didn't get it on because like we we go off of like points and stuff like that but he still has that recognition of like he's the best player (laughs) oh yeah uh so technically if you want to add those in that brings z up to three and elvis up to seven for a second on the chart still leads the tops the chart with eight (laughs) that's what's missing so much freaking time he would have gotten the double digits oh yeah he would have gotten at least 10 or 12 of them yeah that's that's crazy, man. <laughs> uh, before we get into the playoffs, I do want to give a quick shout out to Peeker and Blanks for representing Team USA. Yeah, good for them. Uh, in the World Juniors. The them. So uh, that's four guys now. That's Peeker, that's Blankenberg, that's Elvis, and Tex all going to the World Championships. Th- that'll be an exciting time. Um, Elvis said the thing about wearing 80 for Lapia, which I think is really cool to honor Matisse because they yeah, can't they can't nice. retire the number. Mm-hmm. So he wants to to honor it in that way, which is really cool. So like he did for the home Lapia. opener and everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I hope Lapia goes decently far. At least just with you know Elvis carrying the burden. Mm-hmm. Elvis and our favorite penguin. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, when do, when do those start? World Juniors or World yeah. Juniors? Well, World Juniors is scheduled for like August, and then mm-hmm. the World Championships I want to say is like June or July. I'm not entirely oh, sure. Okay. So as long as the Penguins are out of the playoffs and everything's done, then uh... then Bluger can go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, playoffs. So we're getting into this. Yeah, uh, we can recap, you know, basically what's happened in these series real quick and go through it one by one. Uh, we're going to start in the West and then go in the East because yeah. that's how we did the brackets, right? Yeah. Well, we'll start with the easier one with Colorado and Nashville. Colorado and Na- Shout out Connor Ingram, this kid. <laughs> yeah, so Colorado in game one when Big Save Dave, which is an ironic statement, was uh, in that um just absolutely beat the brakes off of them Uh, um dismantled them and then in game two like i said it didn't end up with a nashville win like i thought it would but i said colorado's going to beat the shit out of nashville several times but there's Mm -hmm. also going to be a couple of really close games that's the whole reason that i picked uh colorado in six and i'm ultimately going to be wrong is because I needed Nashville to win that game two to one. And that would have gone exactly. I was going to say, I needed Na- I needed Ingram to steal this one for mine, even though I picked Colorado in five. Who knows? Maybe, maybe uh, stealing a game is just getting to the overtime against uh, Colorado. That's <laughs> enough of a steal. Because what more is he supposed to do? I mean, he was the absolute, you know, between, okay. He got the second star of game two for obvious reasons because this kid comes in cold and he stops 48 out of 50 yeah and the only ones he didn't stop were the first one and the last one yes from the two goal scorers that colorado had and those two goal scorers by the way nathan mckinnon and gail mccarr uh the dudes that we said were gonna absolutely carry the burden for the abs I mean, like, what do you want him to do? You know, like, yeah. like you can't stop those guys. I, I remember, like, one of my favorite Steve Dangle quotes of all time from uh, one of his LFRs was after uh, 
I think I can't remember. It was one of the game sevens in, against Boston where he was just like, "What more do you want Freddie Anderson to do? What more do you want Connor Ingram to do? You know, pick up, score a couple goals, pick up a couple assists, book the flights." Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> like, I mean, come on, forty-eight make, and fifty. Get this man some fucking tra- help. Make a trade for real. <laughs> Someone show up. Good lord. And th- these abs are such a wagon. They are. We need, they need, you know, car or Nashville needs someone to show up besides Matt Duchesne this series. Uh, yeah. Roman, uh, Roman Joey. Yes. Um, friggin', you know, it, we already know Connor Ingram showed up. He, he had his coming yeah. out party in game two. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe they would have been better off with, uh, with big save Dave not showing up in game one and just playing with an empty net. Would have been just as effective. <laughs> That makes me wonder now because, you know, Soros, they're saying the four to six weeks for Soros. And we already knew he was going to miss those two. I'm pretty sure he's just not going to play. He's done for the season and it sucks. So then do you have to ride Ingram now or is like. You ride Ingram. I am sorry. There is no way in fucking hell I am going back to Big Save Dave after that shit. After the first one? Yeah, I don't think Honestly, so. Honestly, th- that is a performance that's worthy of, oh, this guy's just not getting another contract with the team. He- he's another guy whose deal is up. Wonder who he's going to go to this offseason. Mm, that's a weird one, too, because he's, you know, Czech goalies are always weird. Um, just, <laughs> just as a blanket statement. And he's one of the bigger, like... He's quiet, but he's a personality, right? Yes. Because he's a hothead and everything. Yes, he is very much a personality. So I wonder if anybody does take a ta- take a chance on Dave Riddick. You know, Edmonton. Uh, <laughs> Edmonton, L.A. Uh, Evander Kane first career playoff hat trick, fueling just this stomping ground in game three he's playing very well this series jake and he's uh keeping his nose clean which is the easy which is the harder thing to say and the better thing to say but you know this la edmonton series sure is going a hell of a lot like how i predicted the colorado nashville series to go <laughs> It was a 4-3 win for uh, LA and the other two games were just, just boom. <laughs> I think the Kings are going to tie the series though. I really do. I think they're going to, it's going to be tied 2-2 going back to Edmonton. Uh, that game is tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow at 10. Um, it sucks. Jonathan Quick was really good in game one. He's, he's been terrible in games <laughs> two and three. I think you make the move to Cal Peterson and see what you got. I didn't even realize game two was six. Oh, this is, ooh. Yeah. Mm, game two, oh boy. And it's like you said, right? What Mike Smith are we going to get? Because Mike Smith's been pretty damn good through the first three games. Uh, yeah, yeah. Although he, you know, he, had the, he had the big mistake in game one that ultimately gave LA the win. But um, not other than that, he's been pretty good, especially in games two and three. So you, you never know with this guy, you know, he, he could continue to play well for the rest of the series and make me eat my words and have Edmonton move on. Connor and Leon doing Connor and Leon things. No, with this guy. You just yeah. don't. Uh, Connor and Leon are doing their thing, right? Yeah. I mean, they're, they're doing their <laughs> thing. They always do. And Vander's you know, chipping I, I in hate, just like, I, I hate this narrative that they just don't get it done in the postseason. Because it, it, it couldn't be further from the truth. I want to see more from Hyman still, because Zach really has Hyman played well him. last night. Um, but yeah, I agree. They need they they're paying him a lot of money. And the same for guys like Yamo and you know what I mean? Yamo was good in game one, hadn't done much since then. Uh yes he. Yes, he's not doing a whole lot, is he? He's been pretty invisible. I, I don't know. I don't know if he's hurt. Or... I haven't heard a lot from Nuge either. Nuge had two goals and an assist last night. Okay. Uh, but again, you know, like we said, in games one, two wasn't really there. Um, and then the I mean, did have three points last night. Here's the thing: like, Good. you know, 
it doesn't really mean as much to me how well a player plays in a blowout. Mm-hmm. Like Hyman had two goals and assists last night. That's great. You yeah. Know, Huge had three points, he had two goals and assists last night, three points. That's great. But for me, you know, th- that's nice. But if you finish the series and you have six points in a seven mm-hmm. game series, and three of them are in one game and it's a blowout. That means you had that three one is a little yeah the other six games. So like I, I need some consistency here. I, I don't need you to go out and have a three point night and a blowout. I need you to chip in an assist or chip in a goal or play mm-hmm. you know twenty solid noticeable minutes in a win. You know, be consistent throughout the course of a, a series. point or two throughout each game of the series. You know, Connor's going to show up. You know, Leanne's going to show up. So if you can just help. Mm-hmm. You know, the rest, your secondary scoring, right. that's what matters the most. Exactly. If they're going to have any success. I will say, Cody Cece played really well. Yeah. Uh, he's a guy I'm always on, but three assists. He is a plus four. Um, he had a couple hits, a couple block shots. He he looked really, really good last I'm night. I'm assuming Dunks did all right, too, in that regard. Um, Dunks, no points. But was a plus two. So I mean, he's he's thirty seven. He's Duncan Keith. Is he thirty seven? He's like thirty seven, thirty eight. He's. I thought, yeah, there. I thought he was older than that. To be honest with you. Uh, and then one last quick LA thing. I know I mentioned this uh, the last show, and again, apologies for last show. Technology hates me. Yes. <laughs> uh, from, from, premiere and then youtube i was trying to upload the video uh after it finally rendered the other day and i was you know i kept my computer closed and i was gonna hope that it uploaded like just you know while i was at work or whatever and it didn't so then it didn't even get posted until like three in the morning yeah on friday Mm -hmm. so technology what can you do right um but the last LA thing I wanted to touch on, which I briefly mentioned last episode, the Victor scratch is yeah. still weird to me. I think it's strange because you he was. Your, you got to put out your best lineup and and just try to the, pull the, your way back into the series. You know, you're, you're down two one. You got a home game for game four. Well, the thing that hit me more was the fact that McClellan said he was going to play. He was, you know, he was told he was going to play, and he didn't. That's strange. So that's really weird communication on McClellan's part. Yeah, I'm very lukewarm on Todd McClellan as a coach, to be honest with you. I like LA's roster more than I like their coach. He was very okay when he was with Edmonton. (laughs) Well, also, like, the back to the days in San Jose. You know, like, I don't know, for me, like, I look at his his time in the league, and you know he's had a lot of success. Yeah, also had some pretty damn good rosters that he's never won a championship with. Right. So, um, we'll talk about the maybe the most boring series in the history of <laughs> hockey: um, Calgary and Dallas. Calgary, and Dallas. There's been a combined three goals scored on both sides. Two shutouts. One was one nothing. The other was two nothing with an empty netter. The one nothing game was the most electric first line in hockey, arguably. Mm-hmm. And then the two nothing game was Joey Pavs and Michael Ruffle in the empty net. <laughs> I'll tell you, man. Uh... Hey, Tyler <laughs> Sagan got an assist on the Ruffle goal, though. So he's showing up. He won a fucking cookie. <laughs> he didn't even score an empty netter. He got an assist on the empty netter. Good God. Guess who got the secondary? Tyler. Guess who got the secondary on the empty netter? You say Jamie Ben. No, it wasn't Jamie Ben. I wish it was. Who? Yanni Hockenpa. My king. <laughs> Anyway, uh, the goalies were good. Jake Ottinger, very good. Otter, oh my god. So much props to Otter for just being just the way he is. He's showing them that he's their guy. Oh, absolutely. This is Jake Ottinger's coming out party for sure. 
Mm -hmm. And I'm excited about it, but really there's not much more to offer than that for this series. Dude, it's... Opens up a little bit, but I mean, Markstrom and Nodger have been good, and that's about it. It's the Battle of Jakes and Net, right? Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. <laughs> and then, I mean, like like you said, this is probably the most boring series just because of these coaches. Yeah. Like, we, th- and here's the thing like, I say it's the most boring series. It's not, you know, just like goaltending and be like oh low scoring games can't be fun it's that we predicted it would be the most boring series because it's rick bonus versus daryl Sutter. Sutter. <laughs> the series is i don't want to say exactly what we thought it was going to be because we predicted this but not to this degree well it's funny because <laughs> like you look it's... at the way these coaches talk right mm-hmm. and we know sutter is the most boring monotone quote in the league <laughs> And Rick Bonus isn't that far behind him. Yeah. But like, you just look at these guys and their pressers. It's in the way that they coach these teams as well, because you watch them play and it's just a slog. Mm-hmm. So I really, I don't know what to expect out of the rest of this series. Okay. So game one was one, nothing game two, is two, nothing. Game, game three, three is going to be three nothing. <laughs> We're going to expect us to, the most exciting game is going to be game seven, and it's going to be a seven nothing shutout if this trend continues. I think honestly, I think Dallas is going to take game three, and then uh, I think Calgary is going to to win the next three after that. That's game threes tonight. Yeah, I think I think Calgary will be trailing in the series for a little bit, but they'll still end up winning it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, we'll see. You know, we'll see if this one's another tight one. We'll see if this one opens up more. I want to see a guy like Jason Robertson really start to just light things up. Mm-hmm. And then I want to see more from that first line in Calgary as well. I just want to see something. <laughs> yeah, I just want to I don't care if it's Johnny Hockenpah scoring or <laughs> Erica Branson. Someone put the puck Erica in the <laughs> If it's Trevor Lewis. <laughs> Milan Lucic at the front of the net, just jamming him in. Now, like, just put someone score. <laughs> Tyler, please show up. <laughs> right? Yeah, maybe, maybe Tyler will. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bother it. Yeah. To do it. it maybe no t- uh, Tyler Tafoli. <laughs> <laughs> Minnesota and St. Louis has been fun so far. This one's been pretty interesting. Yeah, because uh it's been this one has been wide open scoring. Yes. It's been blowout, blowout, blowout. <laughs> <laughs> Game three, uh five one for Minnesota. Just so four nothing, six two, five one. So every game has had a margin of four goals. Greenway, Kaprizov, Zook, uh, Joel, and then O'Reilly scoring the lone St. Louis goal and Jonas Brodin. Flurry's so. been really good the last three, the last two games. Mm-hmm. Um, Huso is great in game one, but has struggled the last two. Right. Uh, I wonder if they make a move to Bennington. Yeah, I wonder. Because just to give him a, you know, give him a the game, team a little bit of a jolt. Yeah. And a guy who's done this before, like a I guy who's done this before and a, a jolt as in he's going to fake fight somebody. Well, jolt just as like, okay, like this, this is our guy who's done this Wake before. Up. Yeah. We, you know, we gave him this big contract, like, you know, he's been a part of this room for a while. I think that, that might, you know, give some energy, give some life to the blues. I still think I still think he'd challenge Talbot to a fight. He might, yeah. He 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 he, he probably will uh, at some point in these playoffs. It, what's funny is like Talbot is one of the guys that actually would oblige. Oh yeah, Flurry won't do it. Flurry's gonna be like, get the hell out of my face. Get out of my face. Yeah. He's just gonna smile on his face as he does it. Yeah. Um, uh, game force tomorrow. 
I'm going to call another blowout just because these have all been fun. Yeah, I think St. Louis is going to tie this series back up. I want to go back to uh, Minnesota Tide. Back to Minnesota Tide after a, like, 7-3 win. <laughs> so another four goal. <laughs> <laughs> just keep <laughs> increasing the four goal. <laughs> <laughs> You won eight to four. Eight to five. Five. Nine to five. Five. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we got the East. It's been uh, interesting. Let's go with Kane's Bruins first. This series has been incredibly fun to watch for me. I love watching Carolina. Carolina was my cup pick. Um, mm-hmm. They so, were yeah. my they were my finalist pick. It's it's unfortunate. Because Ronta was again playing well, and then he got hurt again. Then he got hurt. Freddie's been out the whole time. And, and now they got Piotr Kachekov in. Kachekov's looked pretty good. I'm, look pretty I'm not gonna good. lie, he's, he's looked all right. Really, he's still a young kid, and I feel bad for him because it's an unfortunate spot for him to be mm-hmm. in. And I feel bad for Carolina because, you know, there are two guys around. Well, it's nice because he was Kachekov was able to start against Swayman, and he looked good. Yeah, game three. I think that that was a smart decision on uh, Bruce Cassidy's smart part to um, put in Swayman. I mm-hmm. think Swayman's your guy. Yeah. And then, you know, knowing, because I remember watching a video yesterday, hearing that uh, hearing that Antti was at least healthy enough to back up, that's a good sign. That's good news. Mm-hmm. Uh, 5-1, 5-2. Four two. This is this one. This one's gonna shrink. Yeah, these, these it's, games it's are gonna get tighter thing. as it goes. <laughs> like, you know. Yeah, I have a feeling this one's really good. Like, game four could be the tightest game yet on Sunday. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you go with Kachekov again just in case. If you're Brindy. Hmm. Um, I would say if you're Cassidy, you go with Swayman again for sure. Yeah, you got to go with Swayman again. I just, I don't know. I'm a little irritated with the whole Ronta thing, to be completely honest with you. Uh, the perfection line for Boston is showing up. Taylor Hall's showing up. Guys guys that we expect. Yeah, David Postonek's been great. He scored a couple goals. He, you know, hurt the Kings goalie. Um, <laughs> It's just that play was just so irritating. It's like, <laughs> what are you doing? Aho is showing up in a big, big way this series. Yeah, he is. And so is Nino in a little bit of a way. Yeah, because like we know Nino can be built for this kind of play. You know, Sl- Slavin and, and, and D'Angelo look really good on the back mm-hmm. end. Yep. Um, especially offensively, they, they, they look great. Uh, so I, I, I love Carolina. I love how they're built. They're Vinny really Trocek good. is looking good. He is. He's looking very good. I still think Carolina wins this series, but I'm, I'm still very irked at the whole Rata situation. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to see what uh, Jarvis can do for the rest of this series because he scored the first goal of the series and he kind of really hasn't done a whole hell of a lot since. Yeah, he hasn't done much in game two or three, but he was all over the ice in game one. Yeah. I'm I'm pretty excited to see what Jarvis can do. Excited to see what Kachekov can do. I hope Kachekov doesn't have to play too much more, to be honest with you. Yeah, I don't want to run this kid into the ground either. Exactly. That's that's exactly it. Speaking of getting run into the ground, holy shit, Louis Domingue's in that. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Mr. Mr. Louis Domingue is starting playoff games. Are you gonna have spicy pork and broccoli tonight? That just doesn't even sound good. <laughs> That's it. The fact that he was able to fucking eat that shit and go out there as Louis Domingue and not give up a goal and help the, the Penguins win game one is crazy to me. The fact that they have to ride Domingue until Tristan's okay now. It's like ooh. Well, yeah, because because Casey's He's out for the rest of the playoffs. Yeah, exactly. That's a what huge, huge blow. Here's the question that nobody's asking that I think is important. Mm-hmm. Who the hell's the backup to Louie? That's true. I don't know what their system looks like. 
Uh, this series is tied at one apiece, and uh, the Penguins obviously took the triple overtime epic in game one with a Gino with a Gino winner because I mean he is score. Yes, I am score. <laughs> It was all Rangers for a minute, and then Gensel just erased it like that. Yeah. In game one. And then Kreider got it back. Uh, Brian Rust, being Brian Rust, was like, um, no, this is ours. Yeah. And then it took three overtimes. <laughs> the assists on this times before someone finally scored, and it was Guinea Malkin. From uh, John Marino and Kasperi Kapanen. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, for that one, absolute shout-out and kudos to Shesty. Yeah. Because 79 saves. Mm-hmm. The second most in a playoff overtime loss yeah. since 1955-56. And I wonder who's got number one. Press some scrub who's going to leave the team in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah, if there's one thing to take from Corpusella's tenure as a Blue Jack, yes. that was so you much know, fun. The weirdest tenure for a player in, in Blue Jackets history. <laughs> Setting NHL history records and <laughs> <laughs> and being terrible against the devil. <laughs> and then the ESPN didn't even mention Corpy by name when mentioning the statistic it was like okay <laughs> it was like thanks and then game two was a 5-2 win for the rags uh andrew cop again showing up in a big way he's been cop's, really... been, cop's been the rangers best player this series cop's been their best player for weeks he's been really good he's been an amazing uh, acquisition that may have been one of the best like moves of the deadline mm-hmm. uh He's, he's looked really good. Um, so Ryan Strom got his first one. Uh, Sid got his first goal. Brad got his first goal. Frank Petrano getting in on it. He was a guy that you were really high on after that yeah. acquisition, too. Petrano's, Petrano and Cop were two of the better acquisitions at the trade deadline. Um, have been really good for the Rangers. Mm-hmm. And those are two guys who are going to be key to their success for the rest of the series. But yeah, absolutely. If you're the Rangers... There's no way, in my opinion, you can win the series without winning game three with Louis Domingue in that. Well, you, how much do you ride the ponies? How much do you ride Kreider and Zbad and Bread? Oh, God, I'm, I'm riding him as much as possible. I don't, I don't care. I don't have shame about it. you got to win this game. You can't lose a game to Louis Domingue and then have Tristan Jari come back. Right. Even even if it's game five and the series is tied two two, you know, yeah. whenever Tristan Jari returns to the series, it can't be tied or down. You have to be up in the series. Oh yeah, you you got to have some sort of edge. So, if you're the Rangers, mm-hmm. yeah, and, and I still think the Rangers are going to win the series, mm-hmm. but I still think the Pens can do it. That's the thing. I still think the Rangers are going to do this series or are going to win the series, but I'm still not counting the pens out, even with Louis Domingue in that because no, it's I know because you know Crosby, Kenny Malkin, it's Chris Letang, it's Jake yeah. Gensel. Jake Gensel has been fucking incredible in the playoffs it's, again. It's <laughs> Brian Rust, Brian Rust, um, Kasperi you know, Kapanen, have- John Marino. Mike Matheson's been good. Matheson's been looking pretty okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Deming is really the story with Pittsburgh uh, going he into is. this next game. And we know Deming, obviously, you know, he had that stint in Van- He had that time in Vancouver where he was, eh. he had his time in, in New Vancouver. Jersey. He was in Vancouver for a while. Um, I just remember him in Arizona and Tampa and, and New Jersey. I saw the game in New Jersey where he gave up 
I can't remember how many goals he gave up, but they lost seven to one. He gave it up was, a that goal, and it was the game that John Fine, John Hines got fired by the Devils. I remember I was going to bring that game up because there was a shot that he deflected with his blocker, like yeah, this. Yeah, Rasmus Asplund's first NHL goal was, or no, that wasn't his first NHL goal. That was that was he, another one. He deflected it with his blocker, and then it fell right behind him. Yes, and, and then it just down. rolled into the net. And I remember we, because we were on that end of the ice, just like we, we stood up, you know, we we're cheering obviously, and we looked at each other like, "How the hell did that happen?" <laughs> and I just felt so bad for Louis. I was like, "Ah." Oh. He had a season that was like pretty funny in Tampa, where like mm-hmm. I think he was like twenty-one and five oh. as their backup, but like with like a nine oh five save percentage. <laughs> Wow. 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 Okay. Um, here it is. Uh, with Tampa, th- this was the year that they won the president's trophy in 20 And then got swept. He went 21 and five with a 908 save percentage. Oh. How do you go 21 and five with a 908? Oh, I know. You, you played for the Tampa Bay Lightning. 908 is also not that bad. It's not bad, but it's not going to get you a 21 and five record. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you play in behind the Tampa Bay Lightning. Unless you play behind the Tampa Bay Lightning. <laughs> or the 21-22 Florida Panthers. Yeah, true. Speaking of the Panthers and Capitals, oh my God. Um, Capitals gave the Panthers a wake-up call, and then the Panthers were like... <laughs> yeah. um, they, it's going kind of how I thought it would go so far. Yeah, I definitely... like. We knew the Capitals weren't going to go away. No, they're not just going to die. But but the uh, Panthers are definitely showing that this kind of hockey can work. I'm not willing to say... I know it's a small sample size. I'm not willing to say that yet just because I don't think the competition's significant. We'll see what tonight can bring. If it brings another barn burner... For I Florida, think, I still think they win the series in six, but it, it's it's really the second round that's going to determine if this hockey works or not for them in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, Bob's looked great. Yeah, he has. I, I've I've had zero problems with how Bob's looked. He looked really good in game two, um, but also I, I didn't think he looked bad in game one. I mean, you know, he, he one of the goals he gave up was the the breakaway to Kuznetsov and. And I mean, you know, like most of these, I know Wilson was out for game two and he's going to be out for game three tonight. He's got a mm-hmm. lower body injury now, which yeah. is a huge blow to the Capitals. It is. Um, but, you know, most of these, I'm just looking at the box scores and it's all usual suspects. Mm-hmm. You know, and Giroux got in on it in game one. Marchman, Barkov. Huberdo, all, all those guys. Anton Lundell, Verhege, uh, Aaron Ekblad, you know, good for Eki. Mm-hmm. Good for Eki getting back in there and just doing what he needs to do. You know who's been really good in the playoffs in his career that I want to see a little bit more from? Hmm. Sam Bennett. Yeah, Bennett needs Sam to be, Bennett. Yeah. Um, he does have a goal this series, but I want to see a little bit more visibility from him. I want to see more consistency because I think he's a really good player. Um, well, the change of scenery was immediately impacting. Yes. And, and there were so many times where, like, you know, they made the playoffs in Calgary where, like, you know, Johnny wasn't showing up and mm-hmm. Monahan wasn't showing up. Um, Lindholm was still really young, whatnot. And, and the guy who showed up for them, even when they lost the series, was Sam Bennett. And yeah. we've seen Dan Bennett play really well in the playoffs. I want to see him do it again. I think he mm-hmm. can do it. Just want to see a little bit more from him. Yeah. Um, last series, Tampa Bay Lightning, Toronto Maple Leafs. Perhaps I, the most interesting series. I saved this one for last because of this reason. This, we know these teams are, you know, the biggest clicks goal scoring wise ever. And we've seen the sheer amount of goals that not just through this series but through the series in the regular season 
I think well, we say this one for last because this series had the best, the most potential to be the best series, and I think so far it's been the best series. Absolutely. Um, you know, obviously, game one, Tampa doesn't show up. Toronto wins five nothing, and that's mm-hmm. you know, big boost for them, their fans, everything. Like Huge that. game for soup. And then game two, um, Tampa is following a loss in the playoffs. So you knew they were going to win. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, to the Leafs credit, they made a game of it near the end and they just fell kind of short. Let me tell you why I think. How many times I have still, we heard that with the Leafs, though, that they just. Hmm. I still think Tampa wins this series. But I think this Leafs team is different than previous Leafs teams. I told and the you reason exactly I think that. this Leafs team is different is because they're down 5-1 in game two. And like you said, they make a game of it. Yeah. They score they... a couple goals. They don't go away. And then in game three, this is the difference. They play well. They go up 3 nothing. Mm-hmm. Jake, Tampa scores two goals. The 2021 Maple Leafs, 2020, 2019. They would have deflated. They would have lost that game. They would have deflated. This they team, would have blown a 3 nothing lead. They would have lost that game. This team didn't. This team grinded it out. And then found a way to win a 5-2. to two. I was stunned. I couldn't believe that they did it. I was fully anticipating a Leafs collapse that was going to lead to a Tampa Bay win that, that would ultimately – that was going to be like the defining game of the series. Yeah. Like, oh, they had a 3 nothing lead. They lost it. You know, Tampa wins, and now Tampa's going to win this series, and people are going to look at this game. And it didn't happen. The thing about game three for me, specifically, it was a seven-goal game. Mm -hmm. None of your big three, four really showed up. And what's really kind of troubling for me is John Tavares. Yeah, this is the point, though, of this series where I think it is an official concern. So, I mean... First goal, Morgan Riley on the power play. Um, he, he's not one of your big four, but he is one of your top players. Yes. Michael Bunting and Mitch Marner had assist on it. Um, Colin Blackwell. How good. This is probably my favorite. Um, I know I've only been like following a couple of Leafs deadlines. This is probably my favorite one that Dubas has had. I love I love the pickup because uh, I had an opportunity to see quite a bit of Colin Blackwell when he was playing with the Rangers because I lived with a couple of Rangers fans so like they would right. have him their games on all the time. I liked his game. I liked that part of the deal. Like obviously, like you know, the big piece was oh we're getting Mark Giordano. Yeah. To Colin throw Blackwell in Colin Blackwell like that. that deal. <laughs> You know, Colin Blackwell was not just, oh, we're just throwing this piece in. No, this is a legitimate guy that Dubas wanted for good reason. Mm-hmm. And he showed it. And, but you look at the assists, Ilya Lubushkin and Pierre Engvall. And then the third goal is an unassisted goal. It's David Camp again. David Camp had one goal last season. He's already got two goals in three games in this series. It was Playoff so, David. This is so great because. Big one, play Dave. Big play Dave. You have. <laughs> so talking about the deadline moves obviously geo's looked great blackwell's looked amazing uh bush has looked awesome you know like i said the deadline moves that kyle made were so so mind-blowingly good looking at just how this series has gone picking up david camp in the offseason really underrated move yeah you know it was uh under you know at three points in this game and it was quietly talked about pierre angle he had three assists yeah. now it's funny that the two empty net goals were uh mikhaev from angle and then mikhaev from angle i thought that was kind of funny right yeah but like for me um you mentioned like oh none of the top guys sco- neither side the two goals from tampa were ross colton and andre palat now palat's a good player but he's not one of their big five right you know you think about the, the the top five guys on Tampa. You, you know, you got Stamkos, you got Point, Kuch. you got Kucherov, um, and then, and then I, I would say Sorelli and Kalorn, maybe? Hedman, Hedman, or Hedy, yeah, Hedman and McDonough probably could throw Sorelli in there, maybe Kalorn. 
I think that those two are the next out. Like they're both really good players, but I wouldn't yeah, say that's maybe the big five. That's fair. But like, um, I mean, dude, Braden Point, nineteen minutes, thirty-two seconds, was a minus two. I think Willie's. I think back to Toronto just real quick. Like, I think Willie's bad sushi is still kind of affecting him a little bit. That's so the worst. I love sushi so much, but if you get bad <laughs> sushi, that's just. Uh... <laughs> I know that's the joke, but like, I mean, it w- apparently that's what it was, was food poisoning from apparently bad sushi. Yeah, that sucks. Poor guy. She's great. <laughs> I haven't had good, I haven't had good sushi in a while. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, this is, look, look, I still think I'm sticking by my prediction of Tampa and seven. I'm still going to go with Toronto and seven. But this Leafs team's different. I, this I Leafs team is that. absolutely built different. And this is the best playoff built team that I've seen these guys have in a while. Yes. Well, I'd say it's the best playoff built team we've ever seen them ever have. That's yeah. I yeah. In our lifetimes, you know, we've never seen the least advance in the playoffs. I mean, no. The the, the only time that we would have, I would have been, been oh four. I would have been seven. Yeah. I would have been <laughs> five. Four, four, five. I, I don't even know. Like, it, yeah, it's, you know, like, so like we've never seen it before. Right. Exactly. All we have to go off of is 13, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, <laughs> 22. Uh, yeah. All we have is 13 on up. And this Matthews year, now that they've made the moves that they did to supplant matthews and marner and john and willie and morgan you know Mm -hmm. they i think they can do something i think they can as long as they can win this series they can do whatever yeah it's just it's just a hump it's it's a it's a hurdle that they have to get over and it's a huge hunch that i've got that they can do it I think they could do it too. I'm not under the belief that they can't do it. They just, you know, they got a tough draw, you know? Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. Um, but I mean, the, the blue and white series has been like one of the best, like this yeah, is probably the best series in this playoff. It's been as advertised. <laughs> Man. Yeah. I want to say, cause game force, Game Force tomorrow because they're playing every other day, right? Everybody. Yeah. Gosh, I'm still mad that I'm missing Game Four too because I got to work. Um, I won't be able to watch until Game Five. Right. But you know, I broke out the Mitchie jersey before. Uh, I want to say Game Two, and Mitch ended up scoring in the loss, so I was like, "Cool, I at least manifested that." Hmm. <laughs> But yeah, these playoffs are exactly what we thought they were going to be. Yeah. Just the most unpredictable and yet kind of at the same time, like, yeah, there are a lot of great storylines coming out of this. Yeah. And even uh, out of the predictable series. Yeah, I think so. Like, again, big shout outs to guys like Connor Ingram. Mm -hmm. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Connor Ingram, Louis Domingue, Piotr Kachekov. Um, lots of third string goalies playing. A lot, lot of third stringers playing, yeah. But that's kind of what uh, makes it fun. And then like David Kampf. <laughs> yeah, and, <laughs> man. I, just to throw the a front of Maple Leafs big four of uh, Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner and Colin Blackwell uh, and David Kampf. <laughs> Colin Blackwell and David Kampf. <laughs> <laughs> Um, a <laughs> little bit more of a of a uh, downturn angle here. I do, um, as a footnote, man, poor Samuel Morin, this guy. Yeah, he's had a really tough go of it. Um, but for him, like, I'm happy that he's going to get an opportunity to, to work with the Flyers organization. That was the best part to come out of this because we've, you know, we heard about all the knee issues 
and how he tried and tried his hardest to keep playing and keep coming back and now he just can't yeah knee issues are always tough because after you have like that second knee issue Mm -hmm. it's hard to not have that nag you know right it's hard for that not to keep returning and unfortunately for him it just it ended he's he's only 25 man yeah i feel really yeah I i feel for him but that was probably the best thing to come out of this was fletcher this was probably the best move fletcher's made in his whole tenure as flyers general manager the line i was about to use to say you know we're gonna when he's ready we're gonna give him a role in the organization Mm -hmm. and what that is we have no idea right now i can see him being maybe like an amateur scout that would be kind of fun yeah do something like that or have him like maybe like work skill like skills and development training um for guys in the minors that would be fun that would be nice have him work with lehigh valley or something yeah yeah that'd be really nice um but you know all the best to sam because this guy just tried so hard to crack this lineup and those knee injuries just blew it for him um and he tried in both positions as forward and defense yeah they had him moving back and forth for between the two But it sucks that it didn't work. Yeah, feel bad for him. All the best to him. And we'll see, you know, we'll be around to see what kind of job he ends up getting. Yeah. I hope to know soon. Right? Yeah, I, yeah, I hope we know soon, like, what it will be. Yeah. Uh, so the Yotes and the ASU deal is official. Yeah, let's go. Uh, three years at Arizona State with an option for a fourth if the big arena in Tempe isn't confirmed by the end of the third year. Okay. That's a long time. Let me tell you, um, a lot of people, and I understand, are kind of freaking out about the whole Coyotes thing to ASU for good reason. Um, That's a a really... Three years is a long time, Jay. It's embarrassing for them to be playing this long in a college rink. But what I can't get over is my personal excitement for ASU in all of it. Mm -hmm. Say what you want about the Coyotes. We all make, you know, we all have our thoughts and our jokes that we make about them. But I am personally excited for ASU that they're going to get such an unbelievable facility. Oh, yeah. The, and, the expansion of the facilities is going to be really, really nice, I'm sure. And, and it's going to help in bring in extra money for ASU to help really, really bring up their hockey program. And it's been a program that's been rising for years. This could, like, put Arizona State, like, legitimately in, like, the top eight of college hockey lore, like, consistently. Like, they can get even more good prospects now. They can get better prospects. Um, well, sure. We're going to talk up. Up for a title soon. Sure, we're going to talk up how much this is going to help the college program. But um, but the way that this still kind of hurts the NHL team, mm-hmm. it's been confirmed that they're going to get probably a cap of 4,700 seats. Well, I mean, you know, that's uh, it. They'll sell out some games now. <laughs> and when is this going to end? Like when th- it feels like we're in purgatory. My guess, team. my guess personally, never. It feels like we're in purgatory with this team until they either just move mm-hmm. or, you know, they win a couple of draft lotteries and they get like a right or a Slav- Slavsky or. Yeah. Um, or a Bedard or who, both or whoever. So I just found something um, on Twitter. I want to share this real quick. Okay. okay. Even though this has nothing to do with the topic at hand. I just think this is fun for the Blue Jackets. Okay. So Igor Shishirkin, um had 
a really good season, obviously. Mm-hmm. He's wins of, so the highest single season goalie wins above replacement since 2007-08 because that's when advanced stats first became available. Um, he's third, 11.2. Number two is the 0-9-10 season for Ryan Miller where he had 11.8. Okay. Number one, Sergei Bobrovsky. The 16-17 season. Got a boy. So how about <laughs> that? <Have> fun. <laughs> Shout out to Bob. Uh, but yeah, I'm really... Mm, really concerned for this team Mm -hmm. because you know i i feel bad for a guy like clayton keller who's got to carry the burden for the forwards i don't know schmaltz too and schmaltz Schmaltz had a really and then you know this i think will kind of tie into a later segment nick schmaltz had a really good season he did he had a very very good season um and you have guys like you know chikrin what do you do with chikrin well, I think they're going to have to make that move on him sooner rather than later. Yeah. Um, I'd imagine that they're going to trade him, but they're, they're going to get a good haul for him. Uh, the emergence of guys like Karel Vanelka. Yeah. And Kappa Bianco. Yeah, here's what, so they got, so, so on defense, they're going to they're gonna trade Chikrin. Okay. We know okay. that. But they still got, uh, J.J. Moser. Moser's was been, Moser pick. was a really nice bright spot for that team. Yes. Um, I don't see, I don't know if I see Gouch coming back. I don't think he will. I, I think he's done. I think he's cooked. Um, but, um, you know, they still got Shane Goss to spare, who was really good for them this season. And But here's the thing. They're going to fill out most of their lineup. You know, a lot of young guys are going to come up. But most of their line is going to be filled by, you know, bad contracts that they trade for. Well, they have, so they have Travis Boyd extended. Yes. Which is nice. Andrew, Andrew Ladd under contract where we still, talked about Schmaltz and uh, Keller, uh, but the, they're probably the going to lose Bill Kessel. They're probably going to lose Kess, which sucks. Uh, they still have Christian Fisher and Lawson Krause. Who are uh, both RFAs. Michael Carcone is looking pretty good. Yeah. Who knows? He might be the next Mike- Michael Bunting. <laughs> the, <laughs> uh, the three Vancouver cast-offs are probably all going to walk. They're all of them. They should walk. They, they shouldn't get contracts this offseason. <laughs> no. Uh, I want I want to see a big step from Barrett Hayton next year. Yeah. He's looked pretty good at times this year. I, I, I still have a lot of hope for that kid. But, I do too. I hope he can really kind of come into his own soon. But they're um, going to make some moves in this offseason and get some guys. Jack McBain, uh, Liam O'Brien. Uh, Nick Ritchie looked pretty good when he came over. Yeah, that was a smart move for them because, I mean, it's not like he's getting paid a ton of money. No. Uh, but, like, they got a second-round pick out of him. I thought that he could play well for them, and he was really good the second half of the season after he got dealt by Toronto. So. And then Yashkin's NHL return didn't really quite work out for him. Yeah, I I don't think that's there's no reason to repeat that. <laughs> no, and then uh, seeing seeing Boko in there was pretty fun. Yeah, good for Boko. I'm happy for him. Yeah, good for Boko. And then on defense, um, you got Chick, which well, they're gonna trade him. Who knows? I I am probably very gonna. very confident they're gonna trade him. <laughs> uh, you got Capo Bianco, who was looking pretty good. Uh, he. His numbers were bad. <laughs> His numbers were bad, but he looked good eye test wise, at least. I don't think he did. Personally. I mean, he, he, <laughs> okay, then he was at least a name to recognize. He he, he was a name. <laughs> <laughs> uh Deneen, eh, Young kid. He, he is he's a player. <laughs> Ghost had himself a year. He was good. He was really good for them. Really good for Ghost. Um this is here are a couple of guys that um, that they have that you know surprised me. Uh, Kolyachuk or Kolchinak. I, I don't know. I don't know enough about him. Kolchinak. Um, I still I don't know how to say this name because it's like just word soup, right? 
it's not i don't know if it's good word soup either <laughs> but uh Kulchinok, uh we'll see what he can do next year uh mayo darren mayo or dyson mayo he, he's uh he, he's also a player he he was looking pretty good and they then, have they have players on their roster. I can't confirm that. <laughs> and then you know, like you said, Moser had a nice year. Uh, Soderstrom, all right. Anton Strollman, he's a body. I mean, Strollman's contract. Okay, so uh, Dyson Mayo's projected WAR percentage was zero percent. Um, <laughs> let's see. I gotta see some of these names. Yeah. Copa Bianco was also zero percent. <laughs> I mean, I feel like a lot of those guys are zero percent with the way their year ended, uh, with the way their year just went. Moser was at twenty percent, but good for Mos. Yeah, his, his offense wasn't high, but he had high finishing percentage. So, but he also had like a small sample size. Mm-hmm. Um, and then rounding out defense, you got Timmons, who's gonna look all right. I hope. You yeah, know? he he was rough to start the season. I don't know if he changed that. Unfortunately, there's no real player card on him, but he's a guy who had potential. He was a part of the Kemper deal, so Timmons, maybe there's some hope there. Timmons this year, he uh he played in six games and was a minus six with no points. <laughs> okay. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> um, but then in net you have Vimelka and then do you think they keep Hari Sateri? I don't th- I don't think so. I don't see any reason why not. I don't see why not to, but like it's it's what Hari wants, right? Yeah. Is this guy, you know, spending most of his career in Europe? He originally was supposed to go to Toronto, right? That was the whole thing. Yeah. Right. But then the whole the way the waivers work kind of screwed him over in that way. But he's still got time to, and an opportunity to play in the NHL and he played well in that time. Played really well in the game against Dallas. Yeah. So Could have really screwed some things up, but you know, Dallas still made the playoffs, thankfully. Six games, two, two, and one with a four twenty-two and an eight sixty-six. He looked really good against Dallas. That was the one game I watched. That was the one game. I did not watch the other five games where he was clearly not that good. But then, you know, obviously, stats aside, I do want to read Vimelka's because this is the guy that they probably really want to, you know, invest in and net, right? Uh, he played gave him the extension, right? I'm pretty sure they did. Yeah. He, Played in 52 games. He went 13, 32, and 3, a 368, and 898. Yeah. It's hard with Vimelka because he's playing behind such a bad team. Yeah. Yeah. Because we saw so many times last year where he stole games. Yeah. He, he played super well. And – but there were other games where, you know, his save percentage wasn't very good. And it, it's the question of, like, is he not playing well or is it just the team? Is it just the team, the team being bad? Terrible. Right. I don't uh, know. It's it's tough with him. Um, I don't mind them investing in him because I think there is legitimate potential there. But mm-hmm. it, it's going to be hard for us to be able to see for a little bit. whether Especially in the three years in ASU because you really don't know how much revenue that's going to bring. <laughs> Well, thank, thankfully for revenue sharing, for saving the Coyotes. So. How much longer is it going to do that? Um, as long as Gary Bettman wants it to happen, because that's Gary for you. Ugh. Man. All right. Uh, oh. Quick quick programming note. Uh, I know you didn't really want to mention this, but there is a whole thing with Bally Sports. Their parent company is launching a Bally Sports Plus subscription service so finally maybe local blackouts can end hopefully i hate local blackouts i'm so sick of these the things worst. it's the most pointless thing ever like why do they exist well because for me too it was like i bought espn plus to try to watch some jackets games and then like half of them are fucking blacked out and they're blacked out on there too 
It's ridiculous. It was like, how am I supposed to watch this thing? Right? Yeah. So, the, yeah, this was from Mark that they were going to do a soft launch uh, this quarter for a Bally Sports Plus. Um, so hopefully we would be able to, you know, cut out the middleman and um, finally stream something. Now, the pricing is a little weird. Or the pricing's a little, I wouldn't say pricey, but, but it's still just kind of like, I don't know if you want to invest in that much because it's uh, 20 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. And it'll be ready by next season when the jackets start again. So I don't know. I might look into it later on. Like when next season starts rolling around, I'll have to take a look at my budget. But uh, maybe, hopefully, it's something that can help people like me out that just don't have cable hopefully i think i might just uh stick with illegal streams and call it a day <laughs> uh <laughs> let's get into some underrated players from 2022 i think we should make this a segment just to keep this show a little bit shorter every single episode will name one underrated player that will shut out okay that's that's pretty nice cool so Let's see. Let me get through. Okay. Okay. So I already have my answer. Well, I've got this article that's got all of these, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to, do, I'm just going to pick one out of a hat. Let me just, let me double check this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten of them. Okay. A lot of these guys came from the same team. And okay. uh, the one I'm going to pick is one that's not. Uh, Josh Norris for the Ottawa Senators. He's really good. He was very, he looked really, so good. Really, really good player. Um, he scored 33 goals in 61 games. <clears throat> um, at the time of the article. <clears throat> and then you know he finished really really strong with brady and you know especially playing with brady and batherson yeah and ugh, gosh why can't i ugh. come on when it's when it's off season mode for players or for certain teams and they don't show you statistics anymore yeah Come on, NHL app, do better. Uh, where are you? Josh Norris. 66 games, 35 goals, 20 assists for 55 points. I like him a lot. He's going to be a big part of the future. and um, that That's a good piece for them to build around. That's a I huge love this game. Piece. Yeah, I think, I know they said they wanted Colin White to be that guy. It's unfortunate that he's not, but Josh Norris is. Josh Norris is. And, you know, he he clicks with Batherson and Brady so well. <clears throat> that's yeah. that's your top line. But, All right. He, I got something for you. Mm -hmm. We've been so negative about them today. Yeah. So I'm going to give everybody in Arizona something to feel positive about. It was the oh. guy we were talking about earlier. 59 points in 63 games, 23 goals oh. for Nick Schmaltz. But most importantly, and I know this is a flawed stat, but keep in mind, I don't think this is a flawed stat this time because it's the Arizona Coyotes. He was a plus one. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> um, and so uh, we'll go to his J Fresh page. He, he um, was a plus. Oh, my God. War percentile ranked this season for Nick Schmaltz. 88% his even strength offense at 86% and finishing at 87% and hell his even his defense was at 46% which is not mm. bad for him uh it's actually the highest it's been in a couple of years for him mm. um really really good player that they'll continue to build around I, I like his game a lot uh I'm excited for him they, I do hope they keep him around to build with Clayton and Barrett you know I think they will those are your three that you should hopefully build your forwards around. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I agree. And, 
and I will say that he had a nice little party with his uh, seven point night. <laughs> he did. He had a seven point game this season. He's he's a really good player. I like Nick Schmaltz a lot. Uh, he's a very underrated player. Perhaps. Back when the Coyotes were like the season. biggest goal scoring team of the league. Yeah, for, for like, like a, a three week stretch. It was a two. It was like a two week stretch where they just had like a few blowouts. It's crazy. It was one of the weirdest things that happened this season. But yeah, that's my pick. And that's for, why they finished thirty first, uh, not thirty second. I'm gonna go with Nick Schmaltz. And that's why they finished 31st and not 32nd. <laughs> yep. But yeah, uh, playoffs are rolling. We've got a new segment for underrated players, I guess, to just yeah. name for a few for like 10 episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, but I want to end this with a nice little sentimental note. When I thought of this podcast, I just, I wanted to get back into a hockey podcast. I wanted to start talking about Columbus again. Mm -hmm. The the first time I tried doing this with shout out to Cody, because still, you know, good buddy of mine, Sharks friend, you know, we didn't last that long just because we kind of lost interest in it. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, you know, I wanted to get talking Columbus again. I wanted to spread hockey knowledge that at least I love right Mm -hmm. and then you know we had been apart for a while yeah so i was just like you know what i miss jay i want to see if he wants to come on this ride with me and just make a fun show that we can grow because i knew that i'm doing media stuff you're doing journalism stuff we can turn this into something Mm -hmm. right and and to be sitting here God, already 50 episodes despite breaks. It's crazy. Because I know we took some time off for vacations, for mental things. Mm -hmm. Um, Uh, Stuff like that. But yeah, we're here. We're here and we're thriving. And we just want to. We're not going anywhere. No, hell no. We ain't going anywhere. I want to thank you, dude, for just being like a really good friend and an awesome co host course dog of course i appreciate you too yeah and uh, you know shout outs to all of our fifth line family with dk being our number one fan (laughs) still (laughs) um shout outs to the artillery guys to matt at 614 to mike todd for being an amazing guest Mm -hmm. uh to our girls like danny and Lindsay and Tori and ellie um old friends jason um you know, people that we still need to miss to connect with um, again. Uh, Chris and Emily, you know I love you guys and thank you guys for your support uh, with the show as well. And, you know, we're 50 in. Here's to the next 50. Uh, here's to what Brad Larson called out in his exit interview for the team. Higher expectations. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. And we'll continue to grow. Share us around. Follow JJ Jackets Pod. Subscribe to us. We're going to try to uh, work on getting out on more platforms. We're we're here to grow and we're here to stay. 100%, baby. Let's go. Go Jackets. We'll see you next. Uh, I'm going to ruin this. We'll see you on Tuesday. J. Jake Jackets, a podcast for fifth liners and all puckheads around. Follow the guys on Twitter at Snake Garinger, G A R R I N G E R, and at By J Ashdown. And subscribe on YouTube or wherever you listen. March on. March on.